Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is August 20th, 2024, and it is 7.33 a.m. And this is vlog number 40. All right, guys. So there's a couple of projects kind of lingering in the background. I just kind of want to wrangle everything together. I just want to make sure we know where we're at with all the projects. So we got the Stealth TV tray, and here's the like here, and here's some other parts that we printed out for testing. So we got that project going on. Um, so there's some adjustments we're gonna be needing to do. I do want to increase the tolerance for this part. I may change it altogether, but I'm gonna give it one more try. And there's some things I need to do with increasing the tolerance for all the screw holes. And I am actually gonna make this a little deeper so that it fits in a little better. Because of that sag, it's not fitting in as nicely as I would like to. So. And I might decrease the tolerance on this just so I can get a more snug fit because it fit well, but I want it to really get stuck in there. And as for the leg piece for the Stealth TV tray, you guys gave me some really good ideas. I did have the idea of sticking a steel rod through this in the back of my mind. And a couple of you had mentioned that that would probably be a good idea. Someone had also mentioned 3D Gloop. I have yet to pick some up, but I've definitely heard of it and I would like to pick some up. But nonetheless, um, I really like the steel rod idea because I can picture a steel rod going through about that deep and it should help. However, there is one thing that I really wanted to do with this project and it's kind of creating some sort of a inner conflict and that is that I wanted to make this all 3D printed. So I just thought the idea of having a fully 3D printed table would be really sweet and not have to use any other sort of materials no uh, steel rods or I have dowels I was thinking about using a dowel and I was really convinced I was gonna go with that route and until I remembered I wanted to make this fully 3d printed so as I'm saying this here to you now I think I'm gonna stick with that I'm gonna stick with the fully 3d printed challenge it's a really uh, I do feel like it, it is a challenge but I'm gonna do my best to uh, come up with an idea I actually did already come up with an idea and that is I'm going to create some sort of a cube that can sit. It's going to be basically a rectangular cube dowel, if you will. And um, it's going to, you know, look like this, but obviously fit into the width of this leg here. And uh, it should be able to do the trick. And by increasing the strength, number of walls, gyroid infill, and also having a 60% infill on that you know, dowel part, and also printing it out sideways so that I can get the layer lines to go from left to right. I think that'll hold up real well. Either way, I'm still waiting on my filament to come in. It's actually been delayed a little bit, so it's on its way. I got a whole bunch coming in, but like I said, it's just taking a little bit longer than expected. And so this is our second project came back from a camping trip yesterday and this part where the leg joins in to the uh, top frame uh, it broke so i took off the other sides little plastic joining part here so i can 3d model it and mirror it over and uh, when i do that i'll be able to repair that part that broke on the uh, canopy so that's our second project i got to get my calipers and my calipers are in a different location and boy, oh boy, I really do feel like without those calipers, I can't really do my job right. I've learned to be real dependent on those. But um, nonetheless, I took them to a different location because it's somewhat of a long story. But I'm going to try to give you the short version of it here. And this will tie into it. So for those of you who are new here, this is my tiny 3D print farm of five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers, one of them having the AMS light combo. And I print out one set of latches. And one set is what you see here, which is a left latch, right latch. And I say set of latches, but set of plates and latches. I got a left plate and a right plate. And so left latch goes with left plate, right latch goes with right plate and these attach to a bigger product but I don't really talk a whole lot about that bigger product uh, it's unrelated to uh, 3d printing per se and also uh, my business partner asked me to kind of keep that under wraps for now at least and um, just to mention this this bamboo lab a1 I use with my near empty spools of filament so any 
filament that I have that's you know used up so much of its filament that I can't do a full latch on it I put it on this machine and I use the auto refill system where once one finishes it'll go to the next one during the print and finish the uh, plate or latch or whatever I'm printing here and as you can see this one finished up moved on to number one and I got a nice plate over here a left plate and how it ties in because I said it all tie in is that I 3d print only one part of our completed product and the other parts of the product have different processes that are used to make them so one part of the product is used uses a CNC machine to cut wood or MDF parts while another part that I actually you know modeled out had a mold created for uses injection molding so all these different parts of the product come in separately from the manufacturers i'm one of my own manufacturers which is this uh 3d printed stuff here in petg but i got two other manufacturers that manufacture the cnc parts and manufacture the injection molded parts and when they come in they're all in separate boxes so this round I had 300 units come in of each. So I had 300 CNC parts come in, I had 300 injection molded parts come in, and I have 300 sets. So remember this is one set of 3D printed plates and latches. And I don't know if you know, having 600 boxes is a lot of boxes. And not only that, the product needs to have its own box. So we also have 300 unassembled boxes <laughs> in a box. <laughs> so that kind of really takes up a lot of space. Here is one part of it there is another part of it up there are just bamboo lab boxes there so those are not related to the product assembly itself but then we have boxes like this massive one which is the box that houses the boxes for the product if that makes any sense <laughs> but as you can see yeah there's quite a few boxes here i probably said boxes a grand total of 50 times there but nonetheless there's a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> and so once I'm ready to assemble, I have to take everything out. I have to make sure I recycle those boxes and have a place to build out the entire product, build out the box, put it in the box, seal it up, so on and so forth, and get it ready for shipping. And they're not small products. They're not huge products, but they're certainly not small products. And why I brought all this up is because that's where my calipers are. We're going to go there today and I'll show you the little location that I'm working in. And um, it's about a half hour drive from here. So, so it's not too close, not too far. But nonetheless, I did also want to mention that if you're ever going through a prototyping process, there's a company called PCB Way, which is sponsoring today's video. And I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. And what they can do for you is they can give you CNC products, injection molded products. They can also do 3D printing. So if these are all different processes of manufacturing that you use, PCB Way has got you covered. They do it all on their site, which I find to be really cool. And they can also assemble the product for you. So you can have those parts manufactured out and assembled. And if you're working on prototyping as well, they can have that finished prototype sent to you. All you got to do is jump on their website, upload your files. You'll get a quote. And once you're ready, you can get your parts manufactured, assembled, and shipped over to you. And I put a link to PCB Way in the description. By the way, it is 77.2 degrees Fahrenheit in the 3D printer room, and there's a 44% humidity level in here. And these guys over here are all available for free on my Maker World. You got the uh, Sith throne for your phone, Darth Vader's throne for your phone, and Bo Katan's throne for your phone. And this here is a makeshift phone, and it kind of just demonstrates what you can do with these thrones, and they also recline. So all this is available on my make world for free links in the description there is green from rainbow friends and and we have the stealth french side table and this is in the same line as that stealth tv tray i've been talking about this entire time i go for that nice geometric look so as you can see here i accentuate the uh, edges there and give uh for lack of a better way of describing it i give kind of like a diamond look where you get all the uh, hard edges there which constitutes that stealth design but nonetheless let's get the tiny 3D print farm of five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers continuing production. All right. All right, I gotta get a refill. All right, what do you know? That's what's great about these 3D theory coasters. You could just smack your cup right on top and get a new cup of coffee. That'll be the day. It definitely can't do that, but I did get myself some more coffee. Nice. All right, guys, let's get the show on the road. Just to double check that it was just the slot. Yep, that needs to be replaced. Very nice. This is the left latch, and that is looking nice. Huh, 
I have no idea why there is a black. Oh, okay. It looks like a piece of filament. Now, for that reason, I'm not going to include this piece. This is a, a little bit of black filament from previous prints we've been doing. That is just too noticeable for me to want to include that. So, for that reason, I'm not going to include this piece in production. But it is a perfectly good piece. It just has a little bit of a cosmetic defect. Alright guys, now that we got that little test strip off of there, I am going to do the left plate again because I do not want to use that piece there because it had that little bit of a defect. I know if I were to receive something like that, I wouldn't be too happy about seeing that. So moving on to the next ones. All right, guys, now we got our latches here. And likewise, I'm just going to get rid of this little test strip. And let's see how this turned out. It turned out great. That is looking really good. Okay, for this piece, that is also looking good. However, we have a couple of stringing issues going on over here. That is funny because I haven't seen anything like this in a while. Usually it comes out almost perfect, if not perfect itself. But nonetheless, it's still a perfectly good product. It'll do its job perfectly. Just a little bit of stringing there. But other than that, it's looking great. All right, I'm going to want to start the next print. We got the, actually this is a right latch. And we're going to do the left latch over here. Very nice. And the temperature is increasing, so I'm just going to put this on low. All right, guys, let's make sure these are taken out, ready to go. I'm actually just going to bend it here. All right, that is looking good. Again, it looks like these three lines are here to stay. But like I said before, they're completely flat. So it's still going to be a very good functioning product. And it looks really good. This is on the inside anyway. And on the back, it looks fantastic. All right, let me just pop this back on. Take that test strip off. As a matter of fact, while I'm doing it, I'll take this off too. All right, guys, and I'm going to take this one off. We can get production going. Beautiful. Those are some really nice prints. Very nice. All right, guys, this is ready to go. So I'm going to start that print there. Left plate and over here. We got the right plate and we're good to go. All right, guys, so we're pretty much going to head over to that other spot where my calipers are at and pick those up. And I think by tomorrow, we can start the modeling process for this and print it out. It should be fairly quick and continue the stealth TV tray. I'll see you in that other spot. All right, guys, so we pretty much made it to the uh, second location here. I'm kind of at a strange angle because uh, there's some stuff over there that are private. Uh, and so I'm just trying to respect their privacy. And uh, all these boxes were the remaining 300 units of injection molded stuff, 300 units of the CNC stuff. And I got my plates and latches in the back and my trusty calipers. Very nice. Now I got to head back another half hour <laughs> back to the tiny 3D print farm room. However, I do want to grab the case for this thing and take it back so I can get some other projects done in the meantime. But nonetheless, guys, I will see you back at the tiny 3D print farm. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for today's vlog. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.